Let's talk about the difference between atomic mass and molar mass. When we talk about atomic mass, we're talking about the mass of one atom. When we talk about the mass of one mole, we're talking about the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. That's a lot of atoms. The reason why we talk about molar mass or we use molar mass in calculations when we're dealing with chemical compounds is because in the chemistry lab, we need to work with amounts that we can see, that we can measure, that are tangible. And with the technology that we have available to us right now in our high school chemistry lab, we don't have anything that will allow us to work with just one atom. So that's why we work with larger quantities of atoms and we call that quantity a mole. So oftentimes we work with moles or fractions of moles. So let's talk about how the mass works when we're looking at the periodic table. If you pull up a periodic table, most have a key that will tell you what the numbers represent. So this particular example of the periodic table shows the element boron. Boron is shown to have a mass of 10.81, and that's, no, that's shown to be the relative atomic mass. So if we're talking about the mass of one atom of boron, the mass would be written as 10.81 AMU, atomic mass units, or 10.81U, which stands for unified mass units. If we're talking about the mass of one mole of boron, we would be talking about 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of boron. And that measurement would be 10.81 grams per mole. So notice it's the same number just different units. Now let's talk about how to calculate the molar mass of a compound. We're gonna work out two examples together. Let's start with this compound here, CAF2. So the directions on this sheet say to determine the name of the compound. So we're gonna write down the name of the compound, the formula is already given to us. And then we're gonna find the molar mass of the compound. And then we will determine the percent composition of each element in the compound. So CAF2 is an ionic compound. So we're gonna use the rules of ionic nomenclature to write its name down. So calcium, CA is calcium. It is not a transition metal. Its oxidation number is only plus two. So we do not need to uh, write a Roman numeral. F is fluorine. In an ionic compound, a binary ionic compound, the suffix is changed to fluoride. So IDE. So that's our name of the compound. Next, we're going to list the elements in our compound. Now we'll list the quantities of each atom present in the formula. Notice calcium does not have a subscript next to it. So that means there's only one atom of calcium. Fluorine though has a subscript of two next to it. So that means there are two atoms of fluorine present in that ionic compound. Next, we're going to multiply each of these quantities by their mass, which we'll find on the periodic table. So let's look for calcium first. Here's calcium's mass, 40.078. If we were talking about the mass of one atom of calcium, we would record it as 40.08 AMU or 40.08 units. Um, we're gonna round each of the atomic masses to the hundredths place, just to say consistent so we get the same answers every time. 
So 40.08 atomic mass units would be the mass of one atom of calcium. However, we're calculating molar mass. So instead of writing 40.08 atomic mass units for one mole of calcium, we would write 40.08 grams per mole for the mass of one mole of calcium. Now let's take a look at fluorine. Fluorine's mass is recorded at, on the parent table here as 18.998. We're gonna round this to the hundreds place, so that means we're gonna record 19.00 grams per mole as its molar mass. Let's put those values in our table. Now we're gonna multiply across. So calcium, there's only one atom present in that formula. And then for fluorine, we have two. So 19 times two is 38.00. Now that we have the mass of in the individual elements, we're going to add these numbers up together to find the mass of one mole. So the mass of one mole of calcium fluoride is 78.08 grams per mole. The next step in our problem is to determine the percent of calcium and the percent of fluorine present in this compound. So we're gonna take the total mass of calcium, which is 40.08, and divide it by the total mass, or the molar mass of this compound, and then multiply this by 100. And then we'll repeat the same step for fluorine. Take the total mass of fluorine, 38.00, divided by 78.08 times 100. So we can do that calculation now, 40.08 divided by 78.08 times 100 equals, we're going to round that to the hundredths place, 51.33. I'm just sticking with significant digits here. I need four significant digits in my answer. So 51.33% of this compound is calcium. And then let's solve for fluorine. So 38 divided by... 78.08 times 100 is 48 point, we're gonna round that to 67% is fluorine. Now recognize that the parts, the sum of the parts needs to equal to the whole. So if we add these percents, the total should give us 100%, and that's how we know we did the calculation correctly. So let's go ahead and try that. 51.33 plus 48.67, that should add up to 100, and it does. And that's one way we can check our work. Let's try one more example. Let's look at this ionic compound. It's another ionic compound. I know that because aluminum is a metal. So again, we're gonna use the ionic rules of nomenclature to name this compound. Al is aluminum, also not a transition metal. It only has one oxidation state, which is positive three, so no Roman numeral needed. And then SO4 is a polyatomic ion known as sulfate. So that's the name of this compound. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna list the elements. So we have aluminum, sulfur, and oxygen. Now we're gonna count up how many atoms we have present in the formula. The subscript two next to the aluminum tells us we have two aluminum atoms. Sulfur's in parentheses. This three that's on the outside needs to be distributed to whatever's inside the parentheses. So this means we have three sulfur atoms. And with oxygen, you're gonna multiply four times three. Remember to distribute the three to the inside. Three times four is 12, so we have 12 oxygen atoms. Now that we have those numbers, we're gonna figure out the masses for each of these elements and multiply them by the number of atoms. The first element we were looking at was aluminum. We're gonna round the mass of aluminum to 26.98. One mole of aluminum is 26.898 grams per mole. Our next element listed was sulfur. Sulfur's already written to the hundredths place, so we're gonna stick with that. Sulfur's mass will be recorded as 32.06 grams per mole. And finally, oxygen was the third element. 
in our compound, 15.999 will round to 16.00 grams per mole. So let's record these values in our table. And now we'll multiply across to determine the mass, the total mass of each element in this compound. So starting with aluminum, 2 times 26.98 is 53.96 grams per mole. Uh, sulfur, 3 times 32.06 is 96.18 grams per mole. And then oxygen is 12 times 16, which is 192 grams per mole. Now to find the total mass of this compound, we're going to add these products together. So the molar mass of aluminum sulfate will be 53.96 plus 96.18 plus 192. And that gives us a total of 342.14 grams per mole. So this is the molar mass of the compound. The next step in this problem is to determine the percent of aluminum, the percent of sulfur, and the percent of oxygen in this compound. So the way we do that is we take the total mass of each ind individual element and divide it by the molar mass of the compound. Then we're going to multiply each of these by 100 to find the percentage. So if we do the calculations for aluminum, 50, 53.96 divided by 342.14 times 100, that comes out to 15.77. We're going to stick with the hundreds place for significant digits. 15.77% uh, of this compound is aluminum. The next calculation will be for sulfur, so 96.18 uh, divided by 342.14 times 100 comes out to 28.11, again, four significant digits, 28.11% of this compound is sulfur. And then finally, we have oxygen, 192 divided by 342.14 times 100. We'll round this one to 56.117%, five significant digits on oxygen. And this is how we calculate the percent of each element in a compound. To determine if our percentages are correct, all we would have to do to check our work is add these three values together. And the sum of these percentages should equal approximately 100%. So let's try it. 15.77 plus 28.11 plus 56.117. And that comes out to very close to 100%. So we know that we got these percentages correct. Um, and this is another example of how to calculate the molar mass of a compound as well as the percent composition of different elements within the compound.